Hey, what's up guys? Joel Brinker back here again from Back to Basics Fitness and tonight I'm gonna teach you how to do the half pull up. This, this, this variation is extremely beneficial, especially if you're somebody who can't quite do pull ups yet, you've been trying for a while, you're still struggling, maybe you can't get all the way up, maybe you don't know the proper scapula position, maybe you're really good at inverted rows, bent rows, lat pull downs, but for whatever reason you still lack the strength to do pull ups, then this video is for you. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video so you can get all the sets, reps, rest periods, frequency, and all the other programming tips that you need to know in order to be successful. All right, let's go ahead and break this one down. The pull-up is a rough exercise. It's challenging. That's why it's used as a strength test around the world by many, 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 many people, branches, and organizations because it works. But it's difficult, and a lot of times the information that you receive on how to go from doing zero pull-ups to one pull-up is just flat out wrong. So if you follow this approach, you're going to be good. All right, stick with me. Let's do this. So in order to have good pull-ups, you need to have some basic body weight strength, some basic relative strength. So make sure that your inverted row game is on point. I have a full tutorial on inverted rows. Make sure to check it out. But tonight, let's go ahead and talk about this half pull-up. So once you have your inverted row game on lockdown, then you're going to come here. So oftentimes you're just told, keep doing inverted rows until you can finally do pull-ups. Sometimes that works, but most of the time it doesn't, especially because you don't know how to control your scapula. It's all about the proper scapular position to reduce injury and everything. So you can do these from inside of a squat rack. You just set the barbell up on pins, or you can do it inside of a Smith machine. You can use rings or a TRX. You can even hang a long towel or something like that and grip onto the sides. You just need to rig up something like this. Now from here, you're gonna go ahead and get in, you're, you're gonna go ahead and get into the position almost like you're gonna do inverted rows, but instead we're gonna let our butt hang down towards the floor and I'm gonna be on my heels just like this. So notice my toes are all the way off the ground. Now, the first thing you're gonna notice is probably that your shoulders are all the way up by your ears. This is shoulder elevation. We don't ever want to do this. What we want is to pull from shoulder elevation into scapular depression. So you just want to think putting your shoulder blades into your back pockets. Also notice that I didn't bend my elbows when I did that. I just sucked the shoulder blades down. This is the correct starting position for the pull up. Now from here, we're just gonna go ahead and initiate the pull and we're gonna exhale through the mouth. Once I get to the top, what I'm looking for is full retraction of the scapula. Notice where my shoulder is in relation to my chest. It's very far behind my chest because I'm pinching my shoulder blades together. Now from here, I would inhale through the nose on the negative and that would make one rep. Once you get to the bottom, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead, especially as a beginner, let your scapula go back into elevation again, pull it back to depression, and then pull rep number two. Go all the way back down under control and repeat. Your first goal as a beginner is three sets of 15 reps with a 90 second rest period in between sets. Every week, you're gonna drop the rest period by five seconds. So you're gonna go 90 seconds on week one, then you're gonna go 85 seconds on week two, 80 on week three. Keep doing it in that fashion until you get to three sets of 15 reps with the 60 second rest period in between your sets. Once you can do that, then you're ready to move on to, to the uh, progression number two. So progression number two, we're gonna have the box. So we're gonna have some, we're gonna have a box or some blocks. And then what you're gonna do now is you're simply gonna just put your heels up on the blocks like this. So what you're gonna notice now is that you have way less leg drive. Yeah, you can push a little bit from your heels, but not nearly as much as you could when you had bent knees from the floor. Same thing, depress the scapula and then pull. But in this variation, especially if you're someone who's really used to bent over rows, what you're gonna notice is this. You might have a good starting position, but once you approach the top, the body almost starts to put itself into the row position. Don't do that. Make sure that you stay vertical in the upper body the entire time. <clears throat> Some other common things that happen are you start to go too fast and you start pulling too much with the forearms and the biceps, not so much the back. That would look like this. 
Either one, you didn't depress the scapula from the beginning, you started an elevation, so now you look like this at the top of your pull up. Notice the difference. My shoulders are very close to my chest. There's no retraction here, as opposed to this. Now I have retraction. Protraction bad, retraction good. So if you notice at the top of that pull up that your shoulders are starting to become very close together and your back is starting to appear rounded, then that means that you didn't get the scapular retraction, which means that either A, you're going too fast and you're not focusing, or that variation is still too hard for you. So your goal from here is also the same as it was in the bent knee variation. Three sets of 15 reps with a 90 second rest period, decreasing five seconds per week until you get to three sets of 15 reps with a 60 second rest period. Now, let's talk about what happens if it doesn't work out perfectly like that. You do your three sets of 15 reps from the bent knee variation, but you get to a point where you're not making much progress anymore. The, the nice little linear progression stopped. It always does. This is where we need some tricks up our sleeve in order to keep the gains coming. So some things you can do are paused reps, especially in the top position where most people are the weakest in the pull-up. So what you would do here is you would go ahead and have your reps look like this. Instead of coming up on one second up, one second down, Reps could be one, two, down. One, two, down. Just that extra second of time under tension at the top is gonna add a lot of stress to the biceps, to the upper back, to the forearms, and it's just gonna put more time under tension to the set total. That could be enough to help break you out of a plateau. A good goal to shoot for would be to add one second every time you complete three sets of 10. So for example, a good little way to bust yourself out of, of a plateau is to hit three sets of 10 reps with the two second pause at the top of each rep. Once you can do that, your next goal is three sets of 10 reps with the three second pause at the top. Then your next goal, three sets of 10 reps with the four second pause at the top, same rest period reduction technique that I mentioned in the other two variations. The other thing you could do would be one and a half chins, or in this case, one and a half half chin ups. So we would come all the way up, we would go halfway down, pause for a second, pull all the way back up, and then go all the way back down. That would make one repetition. Your goal, three sets of 10 repetitions, eventually with the 60 second rest period. That'll bust you out of a plateau as well and put some serious size on. The other way to do it would be to slow down the negative. Again, great for increasing time under tension and muscular hypertrophy. I would pull all the way up and instead of going down quickly, I would come down on three, two, and one. And then I would pull back up, same thing, three, two, and one. Your goal, three sets of 10 reps with a four second negative, one second positive, resting 60 seconds in between sets. That's rough right there. You can also add weight to yourself with a weight vest or a backpack, or you could load a weight plate on your hips and you could pull them weighted. You could also put some towels over the bar and you could grip the towels and do them. That's just gonna build up your grip strength more. You can also hang some chains and you can do them from chains. You can do them from ropes. You can do them from softballs. You can do them from campus boards. You can do them from your fingertips as opposed to gripping it from here. You can use a fat grip and you can put it over the barbell on the Smith machine so it's a really wide grip. Do them supinated, do them neutral, do them pronated. And remember that the chin up grip and the neutral grip is generally the easier grip. The pronated grip is the hardest. If you're somebody who's had shoulder injuries in the past, I highly recommend starting off with the neutral grip, palms facing each other. It's just gonna keep your shoulders in a more neutral position and it tends to be more friendly on the elbows and on the shoulder. As far as the frequency, how often should you do this exercise? Start off with twice a week. Make sure you have at least two to three days in between sessions. You're gonna to wanna to keep your sets at about three. Over time, you can increase to five. So stay in that three to five set range. 
as far as your reps, you can really stay anywhere from like three reps all the way to 20, 30, and beyond. You can really get a lot of gains at any rep range, and it just depends on what your goal is. You can do them weighted in the four to eight range for strength. You can do them weighted in the eight to 15 rep range for more muscular hypertrophy. You can go 15 to 30 reps for muscular endurance and a crazy pump. There's, a, there's really a lot of ways to mix in the programming that's its own video. And like I said, as far as the rest periods go, 60 seconds to 90 seconds is gonna be good. These also pair well in a superset, so you would do these first, and then you can pair them with something like dips, push-ups, a leg exercise, so yeah. Uh, be careful with your elbows. Make sure that every two to four weeks, you change the grip. So if you've been working a lot on neutrals, change it to supinated or change it to pronated, or if you do these three days a week, one day military, one day neutral, one day chin, you know, just mix it up so that way you get strong from different from different positions and you don't put too much stress on the same area. So there you have it guys. There's the one and a half grip pull up. Again, I can't speak highly enough about this exercise. It's really going to teach you the proper scapular position. And yeah, so if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll get back to everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Please follow, like, comment, subscribe, and until next time, stay strong. Peace.